I became a feminist in Spain without calling myself a feminist at that time because of the attitudes of men towards women and of the culture towards women in general, so that I was already primed to feel and understand what that drive for another way of being was. And in my own personal life, uh, in relationship to my divorce, and uh, in, in Spain when I left, uh, a woman couldn't have her own bank account. Her husband had access to it. Yeah, she couldn't leave the country with her children without her husband's permission. You couldn't get a divorce. So there were all of these elements. That was an important antecedent to coming back and expecting to see a social revolution in terms of sexual liberation and realizing that everything was still really uh, very much the same. The first pictures that I did, I was looking for a way to use a figure so that I could uh, say uh, certain things more directly. So I was using the uh, paint in a very gestural way, and the figures were somewhat abstracted. So that was the first series that I did. And I decided to use the erotic theme because I wanted to use a figure in a way that was not in the academic uh, standard, the new on the uh, figure on the pedestal. Uh, and that I looked for what, how could I use a figure in a theme that was totally contemporary, so, and that I was interested in. And I was of an age that I was interested in the sexual theme, right? So that was why, uh, you know, I went to the erotic figure. I had uh, some friends who suggested that I uh, should be looking at, at what I'm trying to do to make it stronger, given that I'm doing these, these expressionist uh, paintings of people may, uh, having sex. She said, well, I have a friend who was an exhibitionist, basically, who liked to have that kind of environment. And so a couple of friends, we got together, and this guy would come with a friend of his who was agreeable, and they would have do their thing, and we would draw or do whatever. One friend was doing, making films. Another was taking photographs. I was, I was drawing. So I made a whole series of real action drawings uh, from this uh, whole setup. And then I decided that the action drawings uh, were great for these expressionist paintings, but I couldn't just kept, keep doing it that way. I wanted to go further, so I went to the camera. So I even uh, allowed for the dis photographic distortions uh, to, to remain in the painting. I didn't correct them, you know, because I wanted and understood that, that this was a construct in one form or another. And it was intended to be a rebellious ship. Because what I was, what I was interested in doing was really uh, subverting uh, the whole genre of the nude. To be able to do it in a way that was logical for me as a woman to do it. And for it to be obvious that it was from a woman's point of view. So that to undercut and subvert the kind of passive, dominant, ridiculous kind of attitude that was uh, embodied in so much of classical uh, uh, and Renaissance and modernist painting about women, because the nude had always been there. It became a genre. It wasn't even about a person ever, you know, or about a specific individual. I didn't want to idealize. I wanted the body to be a specific body, 
rather than the idealization of what femininity is about. It was, it was simply that since I had always worked abstractly, you know, and felt that I could use any color I wanted, I wasn't willing to give that up, even though I moved into a realist mode. So I felt like, why couldn't I make the color abstract, even if the figures were realistic? And that's what I did. One of the things I felt very strongly was that I wasn't interested in style, in being stylistically conforming to any style. I wanted to be able to move in any style I wanted to. And I couldn't see why I shouldn't be able to combine in one painting more than one style, because the style wasn't what it was about for me. To feel as abstract as an abstract painting, but to be totally real. Because uh, I think one of the motivations also was that I was very conscious of, of the fact that it could be called pornography, right? And so I wanted to insist on the fact that it was about sex, but it wasn't pornography, it was art. And so I wanted that connection to the art uh, dialogue. Things happen in a way, you know, organically. It's not plotted out. When I first started using the mirror and I was working in the locker room uh, to get images of, of other women at that time, and I didn't want them to start posing for me, I realized that if I took the picture in the mirror, or the gymnasium was just covered in mirrors, so I would take pictures of the people in the mirror so that they wouldn't know because it goes on an angle. And then when I did the paintings, I said, well, there, in the mirror, actually the paintings come sharp, the pictures, the images come sharper. I said, but since it's in the mirror, I can be more abstract because I don't have to pretend to be realistic. So I would be able to sort of play around with the paint a whole lot more, which gave me that opportunity and doing that actually is the first times I took the picture of myself with the camera because I came out in the mirror also holding the camera so and I liked the image just as the camera is one way the mirror is another way and so I wanted to make sure that it was understood that the the image was being seen in the mirror. It wasn't me that you were seeing. You were seeing the image in the mirror. And the image in the mirror is flat, reversed, is different than the, the person in reality. So that what is reality? It's never the painting. The painting is never reality, nor is the photograph reality. Like, you know, it's always said that if you want to be able to do new work, you have to just work. You can't sit around and think about what you're going to do. You work, and in the process of the work, you develop new ideas. And the ideas come from what happens in, in that process. I wanted all of my paintings to be uh, uh, not to be veiled, to be revealing uh, in every way. And I wanted, as a woman, not to be shamed by having desire. I wanted not to be shamed by getting old, right? And I, and I wanted that not just for myself, but for women and for people because men have that same problem. And I can't express it for them because I feel as a woman. And so I express it in that way. I, don't, I understand that there is no real universality. So I never intended them uh, as a way of communicating 
who I am or what I'm about. It's just how I look at a particular moment doing a particular thing. I grew up uh, really just a few blocks from where the museum is, which is kind of interesting for me when I go back and visit that museum, you know, because it's very different now. And at that time, it was a very Jewish neighborhood, and it was a, a, like a ghetto. I mean, all the same kind of people. And there was a lot of action on the streets. Uh, I remember roller skating on the street and playing. We used to play out on the street. Uh, I think the fact that I was born in a very, and, and lived for a long time, in a very sort of insulated community, in a way, gave me a kind of strong base uh, where I felt very, much, very comfortable. And then I was thrown into each time going off by myself to another school where the rest of my friends did not go. And I think that changes the way you, you develop, in a way, because it forces you uh, to be comfortable in situations where you're not one of them, you're the other, you're somebody else. So uh, that was the kind of growing up uh, that I had in the Bronx.